This is the undisputed winner of Blast versus Cosmic Fear Garo. In my opinion, Garo's fight against Blast was one of the most epic battles in the entire series. It may have been brief, but my god did it deliver with some incredible art from Murata and a level of stakes that we literally have never seen before with the fate of humanity and the entire planet at risk. It also was probably the first time we ever witnessed a battle between two potentially planet destroying powerhouses that didn't include Saitama. And I think most importantly of all, finally let us see Blast in action after years of teasing how strong he could possibly be. Unfortunately though, there were several outside factors that hindered this fight and its brevity didn't allow for things to fully develop and show us a definitive winner. That didn't stop me though because today we're going to explore what a full length all out fight to the end would look like between Blast and Cosmic Fear. Garo. And yeah, it's probably as insane as you're picturing in your head right now, so let's jump in. But some really, really quick housekeeping first. If you end up enjoying this video and you enjoy One Punch Man content in general, then you might have found a best friend today because I post One Punch Man content here each and every week, so you definitely want to subscribe and turn those notifications on. But on top of that, if you want to converse with other like-minded One Punch Man fans, then join my new Discord server by clicking the link in the description below. But alright, let's get into it. So as you all know, the the original way this fight went down goes as follows. Garo gets tricked into accepting a small taste of God's power and essentially kills all the heroes and civilians present with his cosmic radiation. Bang is the only one left standing when Blast suddenly teleports between him and Garo. Blast quickly notices how dire the situation is after realizing Garo's cosmic radiation was killing any living thing around him and will soon poison the entire planet. With that being said, his main objective from that point on is to teleport Garo away from Earth. It's at this point that the battle really becomes a defensive one for Blast, as he uses his Dimension Cannon and his Gravity Knuckle abilities to trap Garo into a hyperspace gate loop and force him into a different dimension where his radiation won't harm the Earth further. Now before I go on, I just gotta say right now, the amount of like Sigma Chad energy that Blast was giving off in this fight, especially when I first read it was totally off the charts. I mean, this dude pulled up with his sweet shades out of a wormhole when he probably could have just like ran or jumped to the scene and just immediately starts wailing on potentially the first god level threat we have ever seen in the series. I mean, come on, look at this guy. But anyways, it's at this moment, Garo surprisingly teleports himself back to Earth, revealing he had copied Blast abilities instantly. After now gaining understanding and knowledge of all phenomena in the universe, it's now confirmed that Garo has has an endless pool of abilities to observe and copy. Garo then combines his nuclear fission punch with the gravity knuckle and delivers a barrage of devastating blows that Blast then transports into the sky using his hyperspace gates. At this point, Blast decides to transport everyone off the planet immediately, but before he can do that, Garo does the unthinkable by killing Genos in order to bring Saitama's full power out. Saitama shows up moments later, and the rest is history. Let's remove Genos and Saitama out of the equation for a second. Going back to the moment Blast would realize he needs to do something to take Garo away from Earth, he also realizes that he has to get him and Garo away from there without allowing Garo to teleport himself back like he did the first time. This is when Blast comes up with an idea. To ensure that Garo doesn't make his way back again, Blast gets really close to Garo and quickly opens a hyperspace gate under both of them. After opening the hyperspace space gates, Blast opens several more, taking them to various dimensions at one time. This would briefly confuse Garo, who now has to locate the original dimension they were in and create another hyperspace gate to get out of there. However, to prevent this, Blast unleashes a barrage of attacks on Garo, so he can't even have a moment to locate Earth and escape. The problem is, though, that in their previous brief little fight on Earth, Blast was able to deliver decisive blows on Garo due to the element of surprise and Garo not fully understanding Blast's abilities. Now that Garo has a greater understanding of his gravity-based powers and even using them himself, Garo would have no issue countering his attacks with his own. In pure fighting ability, it's yet to be seen how strong Blast really is because we haven't seen much hand-to-hand -hand combat from him. Well, obviously, in regards to Garo, this is a completely different story. In contrast, we have plenty of evidence showing that Garo is one of the most 
most gifted and determined fighters in the entire series. He can adapt to and counter any fighting style, so in a battle of fists, Blast would surely get overwhelmed. After turning the tables on Blast and landing several devastating blows with his own gravity knuckle ability and stacking it with his nuclear fission powers like on Earth, Garo makes a quick escape to what he believes is Earth's dimension, only to find out he's traveled to a barren area of space where Blast knew that they could fight freely without concerns for others. It's at this point that Blast can finally fight at full power. Having the ability to manipulate gravity and travel through different dimensions, it's clear that Blast had been holding back this entire time. Blast uses the same abilities that we've already seen before, like the Dimension Cannon and Gravity Knuckle, but this time he can fully unleash their true potential. In reality, the Dimension Cannon not only has the ability to hit an opponent and deal massive damage, it also has the ability to transport the target to various pocket dimensions on contact, which Blast uses to further push Garo away from locating Earth. As always though, Garo adapts and begins overwhelming Blast again with his superior fighting ability and delivers yet another massive blow on Blast that sends him flying through the void of space. Although critically injured at this point, Blast decides to use his last resort ultimate move. Blast moves at incredible speed to close the gap between him and Garo and delivers the most massive gravity knuckle we've seen yet. In his fist, Blast is able to recreate the gravity and mass of several collapsing suns on contact, creating a blast many times stronger than even a supernova, which leads to a massive explosion that burns brighter than any phenomena known in space. Surprisingly, after such a massive attack, Garo not only survives this blow, but he even gears up to throw one of his own right back at blast after observing and copying it. However, it's revealed that the gargantuan explosion caused from the gravity knuckle was so powerful that it created its own black hole as can happen when enough mass and energy is involved in a single event. This is the full extent of the gravity knuckle punch. In reality, it's a two-fold attack. What starts as a small dot instantly grows into an enormous whirling black hole, which then engulfs Garo completely. So at this point, this is where I want to explain what makes what happens next not as controversial as you think in determining the true winner of this fight. And weirdly enough, we're going to have to go into Jujutsu Kaisen spoilers for this explanation, so if you don't want to get spoiled past Season 1, just skip to the timestamp you see on your screen right now. So in the Shibuya incident, Megumi finally unleashes Maharaga, his ultimate 10 shadow Shikigami. It then has this massive battle with Sukuna, who eventually realizes that Maharaga has the ability to adapt to any phenomena. Eventually though, he finds a counter to this by attacking Maharaga with two separate techniques consecutively. And what I mean by this is that he hits Maharaga with one attack, and as he's adapting to it, Sukuna hits him with a flame technique without giving him a chance to adapt again, therefore destroying it. In many ways, Maharaga's ability is very much similar to Garo in that if given enough time to adapt, they can counter pretty much any attack. However, as we saw at the end of Saitama vs. Garo, where Saitama delivered a punch so massive to Garo, that it put him down for good, one quick decisive strike could end things for both of them. So now with this in mind, what happens next makes a lot more sense. After this black hole forms near Garo, it sucks him in with such force and speed that Garo has no time to adapt and he's crushed by the immense pressure of the black hole and this is when Garo is finally killed for good. This makes Blast the decisive winner of the fight, but unfortunately not for long. See, there was a reason that this attack was a last resort for Blast. With how badly injured he was from Garo's strikes, he no longer is able to open another hyperspace gate and escape the black hole, and on top of that, the black hole would probably be too strong even if he could. With his fate now sealed, Blast is also consumed by the black hole, but goes in peace knowing he saved the Earth from complete destruction. 